Max Verstappen has showcased his racing skills yet again. But this time, it was more towards the negative side of things. When being pressured, the Dutchman has started using his old antics like he did back in 2021, with the difference that Norris wasn't willing to give up on the proper fight in turn 2, where he ended up with the thicker end of things. The real question is, are we going to see the old Verstappen back? And more importantly, can Norris put him constantly under pressure like he did in Austria? It's safe to say that the Austrian Grand Prix was going heavily in the favour of Red Bull up until the second stint of the race, where Verstappen struggled on the hard tyres even though he managed to keep a steady advantage over the second place Norris, around 7-8 to eight seconds. However, once the third stint started on the medium tyre, it was evident that drama would be present before the cars hit the track due to the slow pit stop of the three-time world champion. Once Norris got in the rear end of Verstappen, he wanted nothing less but the win. However, the Dutchman had other plans, and braking under moving as well as not giving the position back once Norris was at the apex of turn 2. All of this culminated at lap 64, when Norris wanted to take the external line of turn 2, but Verstappen closed the door again on the same manoeuvre, braking while moving, which resulted in a contact between the race leaders. After this, the punctures of the tyres were visible, and it was obvious that one of them was going to be the bigger loser than the other and in this case, that was Norris. The damage that his car has suffered was terminal, and while Verstappen was able to crawl back to the pit lane and change the tyres and ultimately finish fifth, gaining 10 points, while the second and third driver in the championship gained zero points, it was definitely an unfair play for him, and it was visible through his statements. When talking about this matter in a greater extent, Verstappen used all kinds of words to avoid the statement, it was my fault, as it's obvious that a champion of his calibre with three titles behind his name in 61 wins won't just yield under the pressure of Norris to apologise publicly. As Verstappen said, I need to look back at how or why we touched. Of course we will talk about it, it's just unfortunate that it happened. I felt like sometimes he dive-bombed so late on the brakes. One time he went straight, one time I had to go round the sausage, otherwise we would have touched. I think it's also the shape of the corner that provided these kind of issues sometimes. I've had it also the other way around, and it is what it is, it's never nice to come together. However, Verstappen blaming someone for dive bombing after the moves he's made in 2021's Jetta Grand Prix, as well as the last overtake in that season on Hamilton that sealed the championship, is kind of cynical, especially now when he has the far more superior racecraft than Norris that's being compensated by the superiority of the MCL 38. Nonetheless, it's Verstappen who has received the massive critics from the F1 world despite his own team defending his actions, which goes without saying as he's currently the bloodline of Red Bull in these tough times when Perez cannot even outperform a Haas and finish the race in between both American-based team drivers. But this begs a very important question, is Verstappen back to his old ways of racing? Obviously, we've seen a lot of this in 2021 and many of us were supporting the Dutchman because we were kind of bored from the dominance that Hamilton had at the time. So when Verstappen did a move like he did against Norris in Austria, it was labelled as brave and elbows out, such as the one in Imola against Hamilton where the seven-time world champion almost went off the track. But be that as it may, the cards have been reshuffled and Verstappen has been pushed like he was by Norris, who clearly has the faster car and the faster package, but it's just the racecraft and championship skill he's missing in order to compete with Verstappen. The close relationship that these two share is very likely to change now after the latest development of events, and when talking about this matter to a greater extent, Lando Norris said, I looked forward to probably just a fair battle, a strong fair battle, but I wouldn't say that is what it was in the end, and it's a tough one to take. It was a mistake-free race from my side and I feel like I did a good job, but I got taken out of the race, so nothing more than that. There is a rule, and you are not allowed to react to the other driver, which is what Verstappen did three times out of the three launches I've had. Two times I managed to avoid it and not lock up and run into him, and the third time he just ran into me. I was just trying to drive my race, and he was clearly a lot slower at the end. He ruined his own race as much as he ruined mine. This is quite an interesting comment, because if you think about it, Verstappen was blamed a lot in the past for actions just like this. He wouldn't care of the outcome of the crash, as long as the driver is taken away. Even though in 2022 and 2023 we've barely seen any driving like this. Only in the beginning of the 2022 season, we've seen clean racing between Leclerc and Verstappen. 
but that is primarily because the Monegasque driver is probably the only one on the grid, along with Hamilton, who is able to avoid these types of contacts and race him properly. This is something that Norris would have to learn a lot in his career, and people have also compared this incident to what could have been back in 2021, such as the race in Interlagos, Brazil, where Hamilton avoided contact on multiple occasions, and all of those occasions were dubbed as brave driving from Verstappen. Still, the team principal of McLaren, Andrea Stella, believes that the entire world knows about who is at fault for what happened during the race, except for a small group of people. And if nothing is taken care of after this weekend, situations like this will repeat because they haven't been addressed properly after the 2021 fiasco. When talking about this in a greater extent, Stella said, I see that the entire population in the world know who is responsible except for a group of people in Red Bull. But the problem behind is that if you don't address these things, honestly, they'll come back. They have come back today because they were not addressed properly in the past, when there were some fights with Lewis. That needed to be punished in a harsher way just like this. You learn how to race in a certain way, which we can consider fair and square. There have been many episodes of this, and the fact is we have so much respect for Red Bull and so much respect for Max. They don't need to do this as a way to almost compromise your reputation. Why would you do that? The blame is definitely on Red Bull's side, despite his team defending the move of Norris and saying that there was just enough space for Norris to go outside of that corner, even though the graphics as well as the close-up pictures tell a different story. Obviously, it wouldn't have even come to this had it not been for the slow pit stop for Verstappen that cost him around 3-4 to four seconds. And with Norris having a brand new medium compound tyre, while the ones of Verstappen were a couple of laps old, which is extremely important on scorching temperatures like the ones we witnessed in Austria, it was inevitable that a fight was going to happen. A bit of the blame could have been put to Norris because he had many opportunities to close the fight a couple of laps earlier, but due to Verstappen's aggressive style and championship experience, the Dutchman always managed to get on top of things in the 64 laps of racing that we've seen on the track. Be that as it may, Silverstone is right around the corner, and this is a track that suited McLaren heavily in the past, which will be more than pivotal for the future in both of the championships, as they are now slowly but surely approaching Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship thanks to the sprint race results, as well as Piastri finishing ahead of Sainz. With all of this in mind, the rest of the season is poised to be a very competitive and interesting one, but the real question is whether Norris can be able to apply constant pressure to Verstappen. And if so, will the three-time world champion revert to the old ways of hard racing, where he wouldn't care as to what would happen to his rival as long as he's the driver ahead, shown in Monza in 2021 as well? Maybe Norris could use a lesson or two from Hamilton and Leclerc, the only two drivers on the grid who managed to race in a clean manner, wheel to wheel, with Verstappen. But obviously he needs a lot more experience and a clear advantage in the car in order to be put in front of the three-time world champion on a regular manner. What do you think about Verstappen's old antics? And do you think they could be back now that he's under the pressure from Norris? One that was kind of artificialized due to the slow pit stop and the higher degradation on the hard tire in the second stint. Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.